Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today uh, this is going to be another Tab Home configuration video. If you don't know anything about Tab Home, I made a first video on this whole home automation product and how it works and also already we spent about a, a good hour configuring scenarios related to switches and thermostats. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to continue and I think today I'm going to look at uh, blinds and louvres and that sort of stuff. And probably this is going to be a shorter video. Hopefully we are going to go through the, um, some of these related features uh, quicker. Again, I will try to set up a couple of automations and a couple of scenarios. But before we do that, what I did in my last video is, uh, if you remember, I was um, trying to set up this uh, automation on a circulation pump that keeps circulating the hot water and um, I was using output one uh, for that and if you can see that then uh, you can see that this output one is blinking at the moment so it is supposed to blink keep blinking when uh, I am at home and then once I go away which is so my presence at home and if I change this switch that changes my presence away and the blinking stops so if I'm not at home there is no point circulating the water and I was running into issues configuring this scenario yesterday and uh, and I thought it's not working but actually it was working but uh, I made a mistake so let me go to the circulation pump back and if you remember oh by the way I moved the preview up here because usually there are stuff happening here down in the video and uh, this uh, was blocking it. So hopefully we are not going to have any such issues today. So what was happening is that I had this uh, circulation pump schedule, which says that between 7 a.m. at midnight, I should keep the circulation pump in a sort of like an on-off pattern. And for that uh, automation, for that rule, I set up a limiting condition which says that if I if my presence is at home only should do that and when I change the presence to away then it was still blinking and I thought that something is wrong but actually there was nothing wrong because as you can see this uh, rule is now active so the circulation pump is uh, cycling between on and off and if I change the switch then you can see that this rule becomes inactive which means that it's not going to you know change the output but the output is already in a mode where it keeps circulating. So um, by disabling that, I didn't have anything to set it back to sort of like fixed off mode. So um, I realized that probably a couple of hours after I did the video. So I just needed to create yet an additional um, rule, which basically says that the circulation pop should be off. And that also has a limiting condition and the limiting condition is when the presence is away and the vacation. So, and as you can see that uh, now this rule is active and if I change the home state or sorry, the present state, then the other becomes active and it starts uh, cycling again. So this is all that needed to be done. So hopefully that uh, fixes that issue. And by the way, the end of the main video that I did, like the overview video, this was already working because Technically, I recorded that after the first uh, initial video. Okay, so now I will try to create a blind. And uh, for that, I'm just going to go back to settings and go back to hardware and the no devices. I already forget where I need to do, where I need to go. So it's not, you know, it's here. So um, I think I'm going to use the uh, 12 output module for this one. And if you remember, um, right in this screen, we were configuring digital outputs and uh, the universal inputs. But also up here, there was uh, also some, I think these probably going to be virtual devices for blinds and roller shutters. So I think I'm just going to use one. And uh, I'm going to use the uh, sorry a blind as an option, um, and 
And I need to configure. So normally when you have a blind motor, it has a like a neutral wire and it has two live wires. Um, I mean, assuming that your you know blind motor runs on mains voltage. So it has two basically live wires uh, to, one is for up direction and the other one is for di down direction. So what you have to configure for the blind is what are uh, what these outputs are going to be. So I think for up, I'm going to uh, pick uh, output 11 and for down, it's going to be output 12. So it should be these two LEDs right here. And um, let's put this uh, living room and let's put this into, I'm pretty sure that there is something like an awning, a uh, shading, yeah, that's it. Okay, oops, okay, yeah, yeah, and then uh, that's going to be living room shade. Good, and I have configured that, and I'm just going to save it. Okay, so the, the up position is on for some reason, maybe it's some initializing some uh, position. And now I can, um, okay, so this is, this has been configured as a shade. And actually, let me just go back. So um, I'm still learning the, all these different distinctions because what I have is, is, um, is a roller shutter. I think that's the thing which, you know, curves up and goes up. But I think what I just configured here is more like what it's, it's probably called a loop, which can go up and down, but you can also, um, set the pitch of those individual loops, or maybe that's called shade as well. Uh, but um, I wanted the other one because I think that's, uh, that's simpler. So let me go back and here, shutters. Okay, let me just do this um, living room blinds then. Let, let, let's call it blinds. Okay. So device. Yeah, so this only has a single thing, which is um, like whether it's up or down position. And then there is some calibration, which is happening at the moment. So I think what we need to do here first is go into the device settings, because I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a few more settings here. And in the device type, um, okay, yeah, it could be an awning or uh, it looks like we are going to use the same um, device type for mixing valve as well. I mean, technically that has also, that's also, also a motor which uh, opens or closes a valve or, you know, sets between two inputs. So changes between two inputs. But you can set it to curtains that are closing from the left or right or in a mirror fashion. I'm guessing that's going to influence how the, the UI is going to look like because um, I mean, you know, it's not really making any change how you're going to um, sort of modify, uh, so how are you going to control it? And so I'm going to, um, uh, so it says, uh, start the calibration of the module when it's initialized, uh, and then you have this calibration option. Okay, and then, ooh, oh, yeah. Ooh, okay, so you can see all these things here, and I think what is uh, what is important here is you set the duration, how much the motor during, uh, how how long the motor runs up and how uh, long the motor runs down. I mean, technically, with these um, shades or these roller shutters, uh, you know, you don't have a positional feedback. Basically, you're just counting, so you know that it takes uh, a minute or. 180 seconds to fully go up and down. So if you want to do 50%, uh, then you know it's going to be 90 seconds from the fully down position to go up. And um, and of course, if you want to close something fully, then you just run it for 180 seconds. Maybe you run it a little bit more just to uh, um, allow for some you know extra drift or something. But then um, the limit switch on the motor is going to kick in anyway. So it doesn't matter if you run it for a longer period of time because the motor is going to turn off anyway. But at least you would know that it's either in a fully up or a fully down position. And I think this is what these things um, uh, relate to. So this is the calibration. And uh, I think um, maybe just to not to wait for such a long time, I think I'm just going to set it for 10 seconds. 
oh sorry that's milliseconds so that would be so 110 10,000 milliseconds is it is it really milliseconds hmm okay it says milliseconds and I can do synchronization as well. And it looks like there is a wizard as well, which I don't want to start because, uh, well, I don't have anything physical connected to it. Oh, and we also have some uh, stuff here. So even if the, uh, the, the motor thinks that your shades is fully up, but sorry, even if uh, tap home thinks that the shades is fully up, but in fact, it's not, you can still do force up. So that's going to be the up position and that's going to be the down position. And calibrate up and calibrate down, I guess it's going to run it, uh, run the up or the down position for this much time and probably some extra like 10%. Uh, and yeah, save. Oh, that was a module configuration. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Okay. So it still says the calibration is in process because um, I've just changed the values. I'm just um, I'm just a little bit concerned because there's no way we are going to calibrate it to milliseconds. And if this go if this is going to run for a long time, then I'm I'm guessing this really should be seconds. Let me change this to ten, to be honest, and save it. So now it goes up. And I'm guessing around 10, 11 seconds, it should go off. So it's thinking that it's, you know, it's a fully, it goes into the fully up position. And that's where the calibration is going to be over. Maybe it runs for twice the. Hmm, okay, so it is running for a little bit longer than I expected. Okay, let me just go into the settings so we can do some extra stuff here. So sun orientation. Mm. So these things, I think I mentioned this in the previous video that um, I've, I remember seeing um, smart rules which would control your blinds based on the position of the sun. So as you can see, uh, you can do some offsets here. So if your window is partially um, blocked by uh, some other object. So let's say your, uh, rule, um, your intention is that your blinds is going to go down as soon as the sun comes in. But if you do some offsets, then you can uh, offset them by angle. So let's say the, the sun shades uh, from the direction when it would hit the window if it wouldn't have any obstructions from the left or right or the bottom of the up. So you can do that. But then your primary settings is the azimut of the window. So let's say, so that's uh, zero degrees is, uh, is uh, what is it? That's north. So if I do 270, that would be best, I think. And then you can do the window height and the distance from the floor. And I think, again, this is related to how the, uh, you know, the shadow is going to hit the, let's say, the ground inside your floor. But um, let me just have this. So I haven't really done anything, just calibrated the, um, uh, set the, the azimuth. And now I can bring it all the way down. And if I'm correct, this is going to run for about 10 seconds or maybe just a little bit longer. And then it is going to figure out that the lines are completely done. I think it runs a little bit more than 10 seconds now. I still don't quite understand this setting here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so when I, whenever I, I pick in 100 or uh, 0, then it runs for this amount of time. So this is the, that's the, that's the amount just to make sure that it is fully retracted or fully raised. Okay, so it is really milliseconds. So let me just go back. 
So and that would be 10,000 milliseconds. So I would be doing 10,000, 10,000 milliseconds to go up, 10,000 milliseconds to go down. And if I want fully down or fully up, I uh, the it will be running for 20. So twice the twice the speed. Okay, so that would be 20 seconds. So now it's doing the calibration again. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And uh, so if I Let's wait for the end of the calibration. And I mean, I don't have any inputs at the moment, which is going to be analog inputs like a brightness sensor. So I don't think I would be able to use that as an input, but I think probably we can use something else. Okay, so that was, that was roughly 20 seconds. So that was the initial calibration for going fully up or fully down. So now that's going to be another 20 seconds uh, for the, you know, the full uh, down and the full up cycle. I do like the fact that it has these two different times. It really helps to, um, to sort of like zero in your blinds on the two extent positions because anything between is going to be based on timing. And if you are doing a lot of incremental uh, movements then uh, obviously you know it's going to be off by some percentage so having the extra long run when you do full it up or fully down that would make sure that it, it really goes uh, you know to the full extent so I think 20 seconds should be up at any moment now and okay so now I'm going to do 50% and that's going to be half the time of the full run so that should be about five seconds is a little bit more than five seconds unless I misunderstood something hmm. weird oh okay Okay, there is also a delay when the motor direction changes and there is also a delay how long it takes for the uh, motor to start moving into a certain direction. I guess that would help to reduce if you are trying to move it up and down too many times by you know pressing two different switches. So anyway, I, I think I just misunderstood how the whole thing works. But um, yeah, this is just a delay before the motor starts moving. And that, that, that is actually the 10 seconds uh, that I wanted to set initially here. Um, maybe I should just uh, read this whole thing a little bit uh, more carefully because it uh, you know definitely says duration until the motor starts moving and not the duration it moves uh, to you know go upwards or downwards so anyway so I think the uh, the thing is that you would obviously time how long it takes for your blinds to go down and then you set it in these here I mean you can set them to the same value if your blinds go pretty much the same speed up and down and I would add a couple of seconds here and you can probably just leave these as I don't know 500 milliseconds or what, what was it originally I think 180 so I think it was 180 and that was 180 as well. And then I'm just going to reset these to 10,000. So that would be 10 seconds. And that would be 10,000 as well. And the direction change is uh, 500 milliseconds. And it's doing the calibration again. And then probably I should go you know, full up. And hopefully that's not going to be more than 10 seconds now. Now finally I'm getting there. What I wanted to do in the beginning. Yeah, that was roughly. So that's going to be another 10 seconds down. And if I do 50, then that's going to be roughly five seconds. Oh, maybe a little bit more. No, that was five seconds. Okay, so finally we got this uh, dialed in. And yeah, you can see the log, yeah. 
you can you can even do statistics i'm just going to show a graph we it goes up and then it goes down okay good let's do some i, I think I've, I've gone through the whole rules and everything good so it is in that position now and it is 2 p.m so it's in the afternoon so the sun should be setting to the west and i think i set 270 degrees so let's do a um, let me turn this statistic so we see a little bit more so what if we set up a rule and okay protect the blind from strong winds uh, so that's a good one so if you buy that uh, wind speed measurement then you can do that okay so the blinds to be protected and the wind pitch sensor which i don't have and i guess you can yeah set the blinds to like set them to go all the way up or go all the way down and then go back to normal after oh so it do, does remember and you can also set it to these times so you know don't do it in the evening when uh, you might wake up somebody by moving the blinds up and down oh that's nice okay that's just a good one i can live with that so the next one is uh, control the blinds with a single push uh maybe we can do that so let's go back to settings hardware tap home bus and uh, input and then it's going to be a push button and in the living room and shading and shade control save So single push button and our button is going to be the shade control yeah, okay so that was uh, button three i think so what happens if i push this one okay so the blind goes down so single a single push of a button is going to go it's going to make the blind to go either fully down or fully up. I think it makes sense. I mean, if you just want the single button, you can do that. And if I do that, yeah, that's going to do 0%. Okay, that also makes sense. And probably there is something which is connected to either long press or double press. So let's wait until it goes all the way up. I mean, I guess we don't even have to wait. So what if I just long press it? No, it looks like nothing. Maybe we need to set up another rule. Two presses? Okay, two presses doesn't do anything. Uh, or it actually does this. Okay, so control the, um, the blinds up and down with a push button. Ah, okay, so you can do that. So the long press is going to do the position either 100% or a short press adjust the angle i think that's going to be for the loops so we don't let's not use that or a short press uh, or move the blind while the uh, the button is pressed yeah you can do that as well i mean if you really want to save on inputs you can have a single button to do that Oh no, here, that's the, uh, okay, that's the two, the traditional two button version, when you have an up button and you have a down button to control your blinds. Hmm. Okay, so you have this option as well. And of course you can add, add additional blinds, so it doesn't have to be a single blind. So the new smart rule, adjust blinds to, uh, to the windy condition. Um, Okay, so that's going to be the loops to set the, the angle. And it has the same do not disturb function to built in. And um, okay, adjust the brightness according to the sun. So that's going to be the living room shade. And I need this adjustment at uh, between these hours. Okay. Ooh. Oh, yeah. We need a brightness sensor as well. Mm. 
okay maybe we can get around by not having this and cooling <laughs> oh this is really really smart so you can so like when you have a heating then you know set the blinds to zero so it is so in the winter and if the sun is out make your blinds to go up so you can move you can use most of the solar radiation but when you are setting the, your house to cooling your blinds should really be going down so it should be blocking for your sun and you can do the angle of this ah uh, yeah oh indoor temperature you can limit with that one as well hmm okay so i don't have most of these things at the moment but what if i just enable this and let's see what happens okay Blinds adjustment according to the sun, so it is set to automatic. By the way, what happens if I push the button? I mean, yeah, it, all, uh, it always works. I mean, it, of course it works as well. Oh, and uh, we have the, oh yes, so we have the uh, house set to heating. Um, and now if I set the house to cooling, oh yeah, my blinds are going down because it is a west facing window and it's, uh, as the, this is the afternoon. So we want to block as much sun as possible, so the blinds are now going down. Ah, and it stopped, 10 seconds has passed. So if I set it back to heating, then it goes up. Oh, I think, oh, this is great. I mean, this is what I'm using at home as well. And uh, I mean, with less sophistication, to be honest, but uh, this is really, really, new. That, that's good. And. Basically, all you need is just you make sure you have to make sure you have these values set correctly. And I think you probably can play. I mean, you don't even need the brightness sensor and the uh, indoor thermostat to do that. I wonder what the indoor thermostat does. Um, maybe that's going to influence whether. Uh, I don't know, maybe the, um, oh, 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 sorry, there is a configure here. Okay, temperature offset history is this value. Hmm. Oh, you see this? Haha. <laughs> so you can set, so, uh, you have the thermostat for that row room and um, it's going to keep the indoor temperature into account as well. So let's say if you are in a heating mode but your room is already hot for any reason then it might just uh, lower your blinds anyway to stop more heat from coming in. And you can set an offset um, how sort of like um, precisely should follow the inside temperature that's I think that's good ah, yeah maybe when you have really really big windows and it really matters how much Sun you are letting in and out you can um, you know use with the temperature as well but as you can see even with these few settings I mean Literally, I just enabled the smart rule and it was working. I think what would really make sense is the brightness sensor. So if you don't have an awful lot of sun, then there is no point, you know, moving your blinds down and making your room dark if you're not going to get any, uh, uh, you know, significant solar gain anyway. Um, so well, I think that's good. Well, that looks, uh, I, can, I can totally imagine using the exact same rules. And you, you can still, uh, you can always override with the button. So you have the buttons and you just enable this rule and that's going to work, you know, move your blinds all the time. So I think that's nice. What else do we have? Um, okay, yeah, we have the weekly schedule and the daily schedule. We also have the equation and the formula. Uh, oh, you can do something with the access and alarm. Mm. Okay, I don't have anything in the access, so this is probably not going to work. But um, maybe I can do something with a card reader. 
uh, yeah, maybe I can use a card reader to operate the blinds. That could be something nice, maybe like as an override function, or if I'm not, uh, if it's in a property where I don't have buttons for the, um, you know, to operate the blinds. So I just have one extra key fob to operate them and I just use the access, you know, the RFID readers. Yeah, I think that makes sense, yeah. What else do we have? Uh, and yeah, alarm. So I think uh, especially ones that are using uh, the blinds, like if you have uh, metal blinds that you are using for security as well. So as, as soon as your um, security system is armed, you want the blinds to go down. Okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to save that. I probably need to investigate how this uh, overrides the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think, um, I'm not really sure about this, but uh, I seem to remember that the... Um, change permission... To rename disable smart rule change permission. So I think there was uh, something about uh, these smart rules and the top is going to override the ones that are below. So I think that probably this is why I created the alarm and I was on the top and the sun position is always at the bottom because that's sort of like your last rule because you can always override either with the alarm or you know using the physical push button. But if none of these work, then the, uh, you know, your sun control is going to take over. And I think this is why it makes sense that it has an option here. Yeah, make adjustments every hour. So let's say you have this uh, to adjust every hour, but use your, uh, you override the automation using your push button. So you move your blinds up. But after one hour, then this uh, uh, rule is going to kick in again, and it's go that's going to move your blinds down again. And I guess it makes sense. But if you don't want that, then you can just set it to, yeah, maybe just four hours. So that would, you know, virtually never happen. But uh, yeah, I think it's good. Smart rule, is there anything else? We missed alarm, light cycle, alarm state event. Okay, so there are a couple of things for alarm. Um, yeah, I don't have a, any alarm device, so that's not going to work. Okay, so you can see that, uh, you know, what should happen when you arm it. So when, you're, when you arm your blinds, so what is it, living room blinds. And you can just, yeah, move them 100%. So uh, move all your blinds to go down. And when you disarm, maybe just don't, you don't do anything and, and then the rest of the automation would kick in or they would just stay down. Okay, let me not save that and a smart rule. And uh, yeah, light scene, link devices, push button events, script sequence. So I think we have seen the others uh, already. I mean, I haven't gone into the script. This is probably something that uh, I need to do, uh, spend more time learning. But also the sequencer is nice. So you can run a sequence of uh, um, steps controlled by a push button, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so like uh, a sequence could be, actually I would program a uh, turn all my lights off as a sequence. Uh, I mean, it would be really complicated, I mean, well, it would be really time consuming to uh, program it, but as you can see, you know, this triggers a sequence where it's going to turn the kitchen light off. And then you can add all your lights and then it's going to happen. And, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe you can just remove that duration. Ah, okay. So, yeah. Hasn't, haven't played with this sequence just yet. Okay, let me just uninstall this. So we don't have anything else, just the two rules and if there is anything else yeah i should have moved this to the side 
I'm always forgetting about this uh, damn window, but there is no good position for that in the screen. There is always something that is going to block. And um, sequencer, PID controller, yeah, switch event. Okay, so I think that would be all about the regular blinds. And maybe what we can do now is we can just configure it to be a different type of blind. Okay, not here. I have to go back to the module configuration, which I think I do have a button for here. Yes. So living room blinds. I mean, technically you only have six of these because it has 12 outputs and any blinds are going to use two outputs. This is why you only have six here. And not this, but I want to change it to blind. Save. So now this is the, okay, now it calls this shading instead of blinds. So that's the, that's the type where it can move positions and there is also an angle that you can set. And let's see what sort of configuration options we have for these. Um, uh, we have the two outputs. We have the same thing for the calibration. And yeah, we know that the slats can turn all 180 degrees or only just 90 degrees. And then, ooh, yeah, oh, this is good. Ah. Uh, so you can set that for a certain sun elevation. So when the sun is at zero degrees, which is the horizon or 15 or all the way to 19, which is uh, sort of like zenith, what is the degree of the slats that is going to block your sun? So yeah, that's nice. And the sun elevation heating, it's pretty much the same the other way around. So most probably you would just want to keep it zero degrees. So it would just let, I mean, I guess that should really follow the sun. So the, uh, the slat should be, how do you say, parallel with the rays of the sun. So it only casts a really thin shadow. So I'm not really sure why it is always kept at zero because that basically says that it's vertical. I think it really should follow the sun. So that would be 15, 30, 45, 60, 75 and 90, wouldn't it? I mean, probably not 90 because then it would be fully up, so they just block each other. But anyway, I guess this needs some experimenting to do. And um, okay, we also have the azimuth of the window, so let's set it to 270. We still have the uh, offset and we have these uh, distances. And now we have the similar kind of things. So what is the full up? runtime and the down runtime so let me just set it to set um what is it 10,000 milliseconds so we don't have to wait for that long and the duration where how long the uh, when the angle is changed so that's yeah probably that is going to be good and we still have these things for calibration and the force up and the force down so force up and the force down is going to just enable the outputs without changing the the, the position which is sort of like calculated inside and I'm guessing the calibration up and down it's it's going to enable the output and also basically you know move the internal position as well okay let me save that so again we probably have to wait for 10 seconds for it to fully go up so that's runs a complete cycle and once well, that is passed then it goes down. Mm, okay. And Yeah, I really don't know how these things work, but it looks like that you still have uh, two input lines. And if it's 
being pulsed that it changes the angle and if it's being held continuously that then it moves the motor or oh, something similar oh no no i think oh yeah sorry so the the uh the long passes on either of the outputs are going to move the motor and the short passes on the first output is going to change the angle at least this is how it it works i mean uh yeah i never i don't have any of these devices so i don't know how they are actually wired but um let me uh let me set up a rule and we do have these um uh, uh, the single push button control. And again, I'm just really have to think about how did with how this one worked because uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. so it is the same button. So if I okay, so yeah. For short presses, it changes the angle of the of the loops, and for long press, it's going to move the uh, the blind fully up or down. Yeah. Okay. So again, if you want to save inputs and you have loops or shadings, ah, you, you can control those as well. And again, if I start going back into the um, this sun control. I don't think we are going to see an awful lot of difference, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, that's it. That is only going also going to modify the angle of the slats uh, and also move the whole thing up and down. I I'm guessing maybe what you can do is you can decide never. Uh, to move the blinds fully up so you can set this one to 100% as well and then it's only going to play with the slats and not with uh, you know retracting or lowering or um, raising your blinds or shades but the rest of the function is exactly the same Okay, he can play with this as well. Maximum sun ray, sun, sun ray distance from the window in a room. So this is why I think the uh, there was the settings how high the window is and how high it is from the floor. So you can you can allow some sun to come in. Maybe you know allow a meter to come in. I don't know whether you would do something like that. But yeah, I mean you know maybe this is how you like to have it. You have. You want some sun to come in in the uh, sort of like uh, just below the windows and you can set this instead of the the heating and the cooling mode. Especially if you, I don't know, maybe in some climates where you don't really change between uh, heating and cooling mode, then it makes sense to use this setting. And also keep in mind that if you are using this heating and a cooling mode, you have to incorporate this thing into your control. So maybe have this one to automatically change based on maybe a combination of indoor and outdoor temperature or the well i mean if you have separate chillers and heaters then of course based on whether you turn one or one or the other on and off then you should really control this heating and cooling uh, i think it's called a virtual device so then these functions can determine whether it is uh, your house is at actually a heating or a cooling mode and i'm guessing if you have a really big house where it actually matters whether it's like sort of like the east wing or west wing you can you can keep control more of these because you just come to settings and uh, virtual devices and you can add more yeah heating and cooling you can you can just call it the one you can call one as uh, east wing and the other one west wing so if you change that uh, yeah, you can just rename it from heating and cooling just to, yeah, west side, east side, something like that. Okay, I'm looking at recording 44 minutes. I think this is good. 44 minutes is definitely enough talking about blinds and stuff. 
So I think I'm just going to end the video here. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do next. I really like access control. So I actually ordered one of these vegan modules and I also have uh, one of my keypad RFID reader from China on order as well. That's probably going to take about two or three weeks to arrive. But at some point I should have it and I, we can play around with access control and maybe set a few different automation scenarios based on key codes and RFIDs and that sort of stuff. But, uh, and I also have a couple of analog inputs. So probably I would also try to set up a few more analog uh, um, devices maybe. I do have a pressure sensor so I think I can use that. But I'm thinking that... Uh, I mean, the, the, the wind and the sun sensor would be nice, but the way I would use these is probably the, the sort of like the owning and the blind controls, and we have already seen how those work. So uh, I don't think we need to do that. Uh, actually, let me just go back to one more thing, uh, because uh, here in the configuration, you can configure it as... So let me just go back to service and the module configuration and and this one and I do owning I set it to owning I don't know whether it makes a real difference uh, yeah, it makes a difference in the visuals. Uh, okay, yeah, it looks a little bit different. Fine. And I think we can... Yeah. So, yeah, I need a wind, wind sensor. And these, uh, yeah. Okay, so it still remembers this, but you can set the, let's say, the owning all the way back to 0%. and only do it in these conditions. And I'm probably, if I would be able to add the wind sensor, probably there's going to be a configuration button in here. So I would be able to set that wind speed uh, at which the issue trigger and the owning should be retracted. So I think this is how that would work, would, would work. But to really test that I would need a sensor and I don't think I'm going to purchase this especially yeah, I'm not going to be able to wire anything up here. It just wouldn't make sense, you know, me blowing it and, and trying to set it to, uh, you know, to trigger for, for high wind. And you can also restrict it on, yeah, you can have this do not disturb at night, which I guess it makes sense. I wonder, like, if you do this one, whether it would just automatically retract your blind, blinds at, at uh, 10 o'clock, because uh, or between you know 10 and 7 because then if if this action is not going to or the smarter is not going to trigger but you have high wind conditions over the evening then of course it would it won't be retracted or maybe you just need an additional safety feature or a safety rule like a um, like a daily rule I think we do have this daily schedule um, that Yeah, in the periods, maybe in the uh, within the period in the in periods, don't do anything. But in the off periods, you can set the owning to, uh, you know, set the set value to zero. So use this in combination with the wind sensor just to make sure that in the evenings your awnings are always retracted. I mean, in the evenings at 10 p.m. you don't have sun anyway, so you don't really have you don't really need your awnings to protect from anything. So I think. Um, if you are trying to think about doing something like this, just make sure that it does retract your owning at, uh, at 10 o'clock. Otherwise, you have to set up a daily rule, something, something similar to this one. So this is the last thing that I wanted to do. Um, as I said in the previous video as well, if there is anything uh, that you want to you know, see particularly or, or if I should go back to one of the screens because you want to see the details, just let me know in the comment section below. But I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.